Good morning. Today is Friday, August 14th, and we'll be looking at John chapter 7. Great uh, story in John chapter 7. Jesus and his brothers identify the disciples, the brothers, different than the disciples, um, brothers encourage him to be among his disciples to show signs there. And they invite him to go to the festival of booths uh, with them. And he says, no, I'll, I'll stay here. Then he changes his mind and he goes in secret. And it seems to be that uh, he gets to be among the crowds at the festival and listening in on what people are saying and thinking about him. So John gives us his picture of um, the, the, the populace, what they are saying and thinking about Jesus. And um, some are saying that he is the Messiah, and some are saying that he is not a prophet. And, um, uh, and then he says, he, he speaks up twice in this, in this chapter, and it seems as he's shouting at people. And so um, he says, you know me. You know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true. And you do not know him. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. And then they tried to arrest him. So he's um, in the temple teaching. And uh, they think that the Messiah will be someone who no one knows where he's from. But they know where he's from. And they're setting it up because this is the section where they say, can anything good come out of Galilee? So um, the teaching continues, and he says, you know, you're trying to kill me. They, they, previously, he, he, had, he had identified that, that, why are you trying to kill me? And he says, who's trying, they said, who's trying to kill you? you you're, something's wrong with you. So then he, he goes on um, for more teaching, and he, then he speaks, and then he shouts. He, he cries out. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow livers, li rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. And uh, now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. And he, so that's what he's, he's shouting to them. He's saying things and then he's shouting them. He's saying them. Uh, he cries out is what the way John puts it in here. And then they're divided about this. Like some of them think that he is the Messiah because of the signs that he's shown them. And then others of them are saying, uh, but he comes from Galilee. And then somebody identifies that he is the descendant, the Messiah will be a descendant of David, and Jesus comes from Bethlehem. Very interesting. John does not have a uh, birth narrative like Matthew and Luke do. However, John does identify that Jesus is from Bethlehem, born in Bethlehem. So that's an affirmation of other gospels um, stories here. And then some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So they're afraid, the crowd is afraid of the Jews, so then I can speak loudly about Jesus. And also the um, the people, the Jews, I guess, the people in charge, and that's who I think they mean by the Jews, are not wanting to get the crowd mad at them for arresting Jesus because people are divided over what they think he is or who they think he is. Um, and then the temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees um, who asked them, why did you not arrest him? And the police answered, never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, surely you have been deceived too. Surely you've not been deceived too, have you? Um, and so in this passage, you get uh, the police and the Pharisees. Surely you haven't been deceived too. And then who comes back on the scene? Remember, he's a Pharisee, Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus by night and had a conversation with him and who had been... Uh, interested in Jesus' ministry. He says, our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they're doing. Um, does it? And he, they replied, surely you're not from Galilee also, are you? You know, they're like, like, there's no having a conversation with these people. 
search, and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. Persecuting Jesus because of where he's from, you know? Um, de defining him as this or that because of where he comes from. And um, this is not by accident, because this is the message God's sending into the world. Yeah, he's from Galilee, and he's my son. Guess what? Your preconceived notions about who is and in and who is out based on where they're from or their lineage, some of it works in your categories and some of it doesn't. And guess what? That's okay because your categories really don't matter. I am the Lord your God. That's what the message I'm getting from this, that there's this ambiguous situation where Jesus can kind of go incognito and listen to the crowd and some of them like him and some of them don't. He gets to hear what they're really saying about him. And then they send the police to arrest him, but they don't arrest him because he said things that they'd never heard before. And then the, the Pharisees accuse them of being from Galilee or like with the Galileans. And, you know, he's, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to associate ourselves with the wrong crowd, right? We want to watch who we're, uh, who we're uh, supporting or who we're lifting up or who we're being associated with. And Jesus didn't seem to care about that in any of the Gospels. He ate with sinners. He ate with Pharisees. He went to their homes. He he went to both Zacchaeus's home and the Pharisee where the woman anointed him. It's, you know, there, there are just no parameters. And it goes back to a sermon we had earlier about he has no thems. And I think that the scripture identifies that Jesus had brothers because, and they're not another word for his disciples because they discuss the disciples with Jesus. And it also, so we don't know what these brothers are or where they come from or anything like that. And it also discusses where he's from. And it also places Jesus as being born in Bethlehem, affirms that. And it gives us a picture of Jesus as one who would come into the world as a sign to point to God, to point to God, to point to God, to bring people back into right relationship with God. And one of those ways of doing that is not listening to the labels that humanity has put on others based on where they were born, where they hail from, how they were brought up. And I think that is really significant for us because that's the lesson of Jesus' grace and love in the world and also the way we ought to treat each other. So I hope that you will um, understand, take some of this message from chapter 7 and John, hold it in your heart as you go about your day. God bless.